All right, so at this point, what we should have been able to accomplish is to create the Facebook page. And you should make a note that to be safe, that you're editing the page that you think you are, always check on the top right corner, the little black triangle there. Always make sure that you switch to the right account. You can tell that because then it will say the name of the right account right there. I'm on Victor's Bakery. Switch back to my personal or switch to that client whatever, or if I have multiple clients, I can see more managed pages. Yes? Mine doesn't show this page that I create. It doesn't show it because you're already in it. If you're on your page like this, Victor's Bakery, notice it's not showing mine either, because I'm in it. No, it doesn't show. I clicked on the new one that I created, but then it still show up just my name. Let me take a quick look. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to see the various important settings because um, one of the big things that we need to deal with Facebook is controlling our message. Now, with Google+, Plus, we have some aspect of this. With Twitter, we don't. What I mean is, if I go on Twitter and I start to tweet stuff and use a hashtag, 
If I try to put out my message on Twitter, my message could get away from me easily because Twitter is such an open platform, for better or for worse. I like that it's very open, but sometimes it gets away from you. So, for example, there's often the time, there's often the example that some organization is well-meaning on Twitter, but then their hashtag gets co-opted and now their hashtag doesn't apply to them anymore, basically. So there was uh, an example a few years ago. Uh, the, the New York Police Department wanted to do community outreach, so they're on Twitter. Then they um, tweeted out, hey, everyone, show your support, uh, show your... Uh, show your, share your photos and, and stories and hashtag it my NYPD. Well, it got away from them and people started to show photos of police brutality, police overreach, all of that stuff that they didn't want that sort of things to be on the forefront. And so that's the nature of Twitter and some of these other more open networks. Anyone can co opt the message for good or for bad. But now for us on Facebook, we have the ability to fully control our message because when we create something on Facebook and get activity on it and we don't like it, we can delete it. If someone writes something crazy on our, on our profile here, we can delete it. We cannot do that on Twitter. We cannot delete someone else's tweets. We can't do that on Instagram. We can control it uh, on Google Plus to some degree and we can control it on Facebook, the message on our page. To do that, let's go over here on the top right corner. You should see settings. So first of all, make sure that you're on your business page, profile, business page, profile, whatever, and then click on settings. There's a lot of settings and a lot of screens here. I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm going to mention the important ones, and then you need to explore the rest of the settings on your own and make a decision about them. And you have help. There's always a help button. So all of this stuff right here, all of these different settings, and we're under general settings. Um, page visibility, you can unpublish your page if you need to take it down for a little while, for example. Okay, here's the big one. Visitor posts. Click edit on the right side, visitor posts. Allow visitors to pay to visitors to the page to publish posts or disable post by other people. So here we can say yes or no. Let people post something on my page. The default is yes. Let any crazy person write any crazy thing on your page. Again, the philosophy behind Facebook is everything's public and let's share everything. So here everyone can post anything, a picture or a video. You must have one of that. So you can turn it off. Don't let anyone post anything. I don't recommend that because you should think about running any social media as a dialogue rather than a monologue. Tell me, what is a monologue? One person. One person speaking. What is a dialogue? Two people speaking. Question. If you disable the post, does it notify the person who posted the post? No. No. Uh, this is turning off the ability for anyone to comment, therefore I'm creating a monologue. Now. You can, in my opinion, you can run social media as a dialogue or a monologue. Both could work, but I highly recommend to run social media as a dialogue. Let people talk to you, talk back to people, get this conversation going, put the social in social media. Sometimes there will be negativity. We'll talk about dealing with negativity. But if you don't want to deal with any of that, um, you can simply turn it off. A middle ground is let people post but review the posts before they are published to the page. That's what I recommend. Let people post photos and video because we live in the 21st century and then you can allow or disallow what gets visible. Their stuff will not show up automatically until you approve it. I'll show you where you do the approval. But that's what I recommend. You go in you moderate your page. You control your message. And there's none of this issue about you're infringing on my free speech. This is your property. Just like in the real world, any crazy person can yell at any crazy things to you. But once they're doing it on your property, things change. If, any, if a crazy person is on my front porch yelling at me, I tell them, get off my property, yell at me on the sidewalk, and I'm calling the cops. 
They're not going to yell at me on my front porch. They're not going to yell at me on my lawn. It's my property. Same thing here on Facebook. This is your property to some degree. You're not going to be infringing on anyone's right. They can go off on their own Facebook and write any crazy thing. That you cannot de deal with. But on your front lawn, your Facebook page, you can deal with it. You can say nothing will show up until I approve it. So that's up to you. Notice many of these are going to have a little question, how does it actually work? So that's what I recommend there. Save that. If you don't want to deal with any comments and moderation, just turn it off. That's fine too. But I recommend to run social media as a dialogue. Next one here, news, feed, audiences, visibility. The ability to narrow the potential audience is off. Click edit on that and you have either off or on. When we created the page and it asked for demographics, San Diego male 30 year old. That is applied to everything on my page, but if I want to make a brand new post and target that post to females 30 years old Los Angeles, I have to turn this on and now I'll have the ability for everything that I post to specifically target everything that I post. That might be useful to you. So that's up to you to turn that one on or off. The demographics that we chose earlier could be good enough for you, but as I've been saying, you can still target it however you want, but you have to turn that on. Expiring posts is useful for some people but not for others. If you click edit, what this one does is, this happens let's say on Victor's Bakery. I'm going to post something that says sale this Saturday, use this coupon. And the coupon is a rousing success. Then a week later it's Saturday again. A month later it's Saturday again. A year later it's Saturday again. Someone could conceivably find my coupon from a month ago and try to buy my product and then when the sale is over they're gonna say why is your sale over? Your Facebook says sale this Saturday and they don't look at it that said January 2014. So if you click on here allow people who manage this page to select a time when posts unpublish that will help you fix that. You can set a time limit for your posts. Sale this Saturday you set the option when we get to it it'll automatically delete itself, unpublish itself, on Sunday. So that that coupon is no longer floating around there on Facebook and someone tries to use it when it's over. This doesn't work for everyone, doesn't apply for everyone. It's up to you to decide to use it or not. I will turn mine on. Mm -hmm. um, if, we, if we're only making these changes on our business page, so these um, options will affect our personal pages, can you subscribe? Exactly. Okay. Messages, you can change that one if you want or not. Right now you have the ability for people to send you private messages. You may want that because that is a form of customer service. Uh, you can have people try to write something like that they're annoyed about on your home page and people might see it if you don't moderate it. Or better yet, you might have the ability for people to send you a private message. Hey, this product that you sold me doesn't work. I want my money back. I would rather deal with that in private than in public where everyone sees the dirty laundry. So by default, it, is, it does say anyone can send your business page a private message. And this and other things, we'll see where they're all stored at. They're all put on a specific place that we can deal with. We'll look at it later. But again, you can decide, can people send this, this page a, a private message or not? Uh, tagging ability, other tagging. <coughs> these two are related about tagging, uh, you have to decide what you want about this. Here's a scenario. I have this bakery and it's National Cupcake Week. So I post on Facebook, hey everyone, share your best cupcake selfies. So, and don't forget to tag us. So someone can post on their Facebook a great cupcake selfie and tag my business. The point of that is that then my business is getting more fame. My business is being shown to more people. If I let people tag me, my business, in their posts. If I don't want that, I can turn that off. These abilities here. 
at the moment only someone that manages can tag a photo. And over here, other people on their own posts can tag me in their posts. We'll see how that works a little later, but here we're deciding yes or no. You have to decide what you want about that. Country restrictions, self-explanatory, age restrictions, self-explanatory, page moderation. No words are being blocked. If you look at that, what you can do here is put a list of words separated by commas that will be blocked, that will be removed on your Facebook. So if you leave the ability for anyone to write anything without any moderation, people may write words that you don't want to be visible. If you put a list of them here, they will be removed. Now, there is also a profanity filter, so you're not going to need to list of the make a list of the profanity. There's a list of it here. Question. When that filter is turned on, for example, when someone says you are a blank and blank, does it say blank and blank or is it just with dash or what? That's a good question. Um, let's see. If any of these words is used in a post or comment, it will automatically be marked as spam. So it will not show up. The whole post itself will not show up, but then we can approve have it approved to be shown or not. Mm -hmm. Do you get a chance to see what those words are? <laughs> you, you write the words here. You specify the words here. But I mean on, on the profanity filter. Oh, okay, profanity filter. Nope, this one, if you notice, this one says on profanity filter, uh, these are the commonly reported words and phrases marked offensive by the community. So if I'm targeting a, a certain community with a certain set of profanity and such, that's the one that will be targeted, but I don't see a list of it. It's community-driven. If I do profanity filter, I can do medium or strong or off. You have to decide of those. And this page moderation doesn't have to be you know, bad words and such. Let's say I'm a, I'm a page all about cats, therefore I don't want to see anything about dogs, so I can put the keyword dogs. But then that might spam too much stuff. You have to decide how you want to run that. <coughs> if your page is multilingual, there's an option there to turn that on and then post in different languages. People can comment on comments. I mean, uh, not comment, but people can rank comments. People can give thumbs up to comments. The better comments show up at the top. That might be useful because then it gets the conversation going in a certain good direction, hopefully. Hopefully someone posts something and then someone likes it, they like that comment, and then those likes appear more visible. Um, this is new here, download page. It looks like you can download a copy of all your stuff in one big archive. That can then be related to the final option, delete everything. You might want to make a backup of everything and then delete it, but there's where you can delete this page in the future. Sometimes what happens is you've created more than one page. Maybe someone else created a page for you, and now you've created a page and there's two of them. There's a process here, you need to go through it, about uh, merging your different pages. So I would go to learn more. If you've got more than one page accidentally created. If I skipped anything here, it's self-explanatory, but any general questions on this screen? Yes. Oh, similar page. This is a good one here. You want to leave this one turned on because if someone likes John's Bakery, Facebook will suggest to them, why not also like Victor's Bakery? So my page will get suggested to people once they like something. I can turn that off if I want, but I highly recommend to leave it on. Let's look at another screen here. Lots of settings. We're not going to look at them all, but go ahead and go over to page info. Oh, sorry. Page info just takes you back to the about screen. Just uh, go back. That used to be its own screen, but now they've moved it over to about. If it doesn't let you go back, that's simply your settings screen. Page attribution. This is supposed to be the screen where you, where, where you set to not make a mistake about who posted what. 
under post attribution. I don't even really deal with this actually, I just do it the way that I'm telling you that make sure you're up on the triangle and you went to the right page. But this is supposed to help you. Are you posting as properly? When you're creating a reply, you will still have the option to publish as yourself. So this screen itself, the default is fine, but you shouldn't even worry about it. Am I posting as Victor or am I posting as Victor's bakery? You don't have to worry about it because you're going to switch between the triangle. Page rolls. Let's go to page rolls. Currently there is one administrator for this page. Only I, myself, can do anything about this page. At the top here, I add people's names and, and emails and I can give them access. Access as an editor, and it explains what an editor can do. Access as an analyst, it shows what they can do. But basically this is an order from least power to most power. If you're an admin, you have the full power. You probably want to give other people editor power, because if you give them admin power, they can kick you out of your own page. You give other employees the access to this, and then they get fired, and they're disgruntled, they can go in here and kick you out of your own page. So most likely, editor was, would be the best choice. And this does assume that someone has a Facebook page. If they don't have a Facebook if they don't have a Facebook account, a personal Facebook account, it will ask them to create one and then they can manage this page. Later on, once you've added people here, I no longer want Janet to manage the page, you'll be able to delete them from management. But this is how you have multiple people manage one business page. Because you say, well, the, the person that's running the McDonald's Facebook must be working all day long. No, they've got seven people working on it in shifts. So for yourself, you're busy running your business. And now you've got to do social media too? Yes, or get other people on the team to help run social media. The problem, of course, is you want to get people to help you run your social media that want to run your social media. If they're busy doing payroll and you've also saddled them with social media, they might not do the best job. They've already got one job title and now they're also social media manager, part-time social media manager. That might not work out. So let people manage this that want to, that have some acumen in it, some skill, and um, worst case scenario, hire a company that does it. Uh, people in other pages, this one is new, people who like this page, people who like this page. Okay, well I guess here's the page where you manage people who have you banned from looking at your page, um, who's interacted with the page and liked it and such. Preferred target audience. That's the place where I had set up when I first set this up my target audience. So if I ever want to change it, it's back on preferred page audience. Some of you might not have this, especially if you created your page a while ago. That's why we went through the process of creating a new page. Don't worry about apps, that's pretty advanced. Instagram ads. So have you heard of this website called, this app called Instagram? Instagram has been around since about probably 2013 or 12 or so. Instagram is a photo sharing app. Instagram is a smashing success. Even early on, when it was first launched, it was very popular. It was just another social network, another place to share photos. But the character of Instagram is square photos with a cool filter, a vintage filter. It gained popularity and it got so famous so quickly actually that then eventually Facebook bought them for about a billion dollars, literally. They paid about a billion dollars to buy Instagram. And at that point they had probably about 120 million users. Now that they've had the power of Facebook behind them, they've got over 400 million users, more than Twitter. And so I was, in, I was on Instagram week one, so I was a hipster and I got on Instagram at the beginning. I've been on Instagram since the beginning. And I love it, I use it all the time, it's really cool. And then when Facebook bought them, game over. Everyone suddenly was using hashtag RIP Instagram, R-I-P Instagram. Because here's Facebook, this big juggernaut that bought this little indie company, they're gonna ruin it. And surprisingly, they didn't for a long, long, long time, until very recently. Until very recently, the way they ruined it is that now, they've got ads on Instagram. 
There were no ads on Instagram before. Now there's ads. For people, bad. For businesses, amazing. For me as a business, I can put ads on Instagram to reach an audience of 400 million people. This is a very good thing for a business. We are not going to get into it right now because we have a lesson on Instagram later, month two. But the point is, these two are now integrated. We've got Instagram, very popular network. We've got Facebook, very popular network. There's people on Instagram that hate Facebook and never go on Facebook, but you can still target them because now I can create an ad, I can create a post on Facebook and show it off on Instagram and reach an audience, and it works. We'll talk about how in the real world, my company, we engage as much as possible in the free aspects of all of these social networks and on occasion the paid aspects because these networks nowadays have paid aspects which we'll talk about. How many of you currently have an Instagram account? Okay, you will next month. Featured, uh, don't worry about featured really, page support, here's how you can get in touch with someone to help you with a problem. Again, I skipped some things. You can explore those on your own. Any questions on this? How do you get back to that? I've gotten a lot of business. Page info. Can I get a little bit of that? Can I get back to settings? Back to settings. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, the very last. Yes? I will go and just do this Okay, for the moment, just take notes and follow along, and then during the break, we'll try to figure it out. Um, the last thing on this screen is this activity log. If you click on activity log, this is, shows you everything that you've done on Facebook, everything that you've written on about, every single of your photos, videos that you've shared, spam that you've marked, your posts, people's comments, everything, everything that you've done on Facebook. Uh, so you might, you might lose track of that screen the way to get back to it is you, you just make sure you're on your page. So if so, let's say I lost where this is at. I click on the name of my business right up there. I go to settings, top right corner, and it's the very last item, activity log. Let's say we, we'll go back to our main pages homepage. So click on the name of your business at the top right there. That's a quick way to orient yourself always. Just click on the name of your business. It takes you back here. Then I've got the menu items at the top here. Page, messages, and so forth. If we take a quick look at messages, click on that. This is where you're going to see these private messages that people are sending you. If you left the option turned on for people to private message your business, they will show up here. This is where it's like an inbox for this account. You won't mix, you won't see mixed in here everything else. It compartmentalizes everything. You only see the messages of this page here. You don't see your private ones from your friends and family here. Vice versa. It's all in its own screen. So if you look at notifications, this is where you will see who liked your page, comments on your page, other activity, requests, and so forth. Activity, requests, all of that shows up here under notifications. Activity that happens. On Twitter, we have that little bell with a number that appears. I've got two follows. On Google+, Plus, we've also got a little symbol, the bell. I've got seven replies, seven comments. On Facebook, I see it on that little globe at the top, or the little speech message, or the notifications here. But all three of these are consolidated into this notifications at the top here. All my new likes, comments, etc. <coughs> this screen is also useful because here's how you can grow your audience. Notifications. You, you see it in other screens as well. But here under notifications, I've got one like myself. I want to get more likes. I could start to build an audience of likes of followers from my family. The use of that is that if 
as I connect with my, if I let my friends and family like this page, my page will then reach more people. You know, someone else that I, that, that I invited to my page here, they can further share it and get me more traffic, more likes. Again, the whole point of all the social media is to get likes and followers and such for an ultimate goal of selling my product, getting donations, showing my paintings, having people read my poetry, whatever I'm trying to do online. So here, I can invite Patricia, I can invite Bobby, I can invite Melanie, I can click Invite. They will get a notification. Victor has invited you to like Victor's Bakery. And if they were real friends, they'll click like. If they're not, they'll ignore. And that's fine. We will talk about building an audience besides your friends and family. Because you're going to build a business on the backs of your friends and family. This at least will help you get more of an audience. Related to that is share page and suggest page. You can explore those on your own. We have other methods where we will try to get more of an audience. But this is basically to get your friends and family to help you build your audience. Your friends and family on Facebook. Let's look at publishing tools. And this is another place that will show you your content. These are the posts that I published. Later on we'll see that we can set expiring posts. These are the posts that were active and then they will expire and have expired. They don't get deleted. So if I put sale this Saturday and the post expires because now it's Sunday, it doesn't delete. It goes into this screen here and I can publish it again in two months when I'm gonna have another sale. As I'm writing a post and I run out of time because I gotta go home maybe, I can save that as a draft. <laughs> And I can continue to work with my post later. I can bring it back as a draft. Right there, drafts. And people then ask, this is a lot of work. I've got to post something every week or month or day or whatever, and I've got to run my business and Twitter and all of that. Yes, you do need to be active on social media to help you get an audience and sales and traffic and such. But you don't have to be chained to your computer working on this you know, every day. You can set, as we will see, scheduled posts. I can spend, you know, a nice quiet Saturday afternoon and think of 10 things to post on Facebook and schedule them. This will come out this week. That will come out next Tuesday. This will come out next Friday. I can schedule it and it'll go off on its own schedule and post automatically on the day and time you tell it. We'll see how to do that. And that's very useful because I don't have time to be on Facebook all day long. I want to set maybe a, a week full of posts, a month full of posts, and let it do it on its own. That's very useful. Be careful about that, however, because there are many instances of social media fails where a company has scheduled posts that get published in opportune times. There were, you know, news events that happened of tragedies and such that then some company gets called out for being insensitive because they posted something that you know, made light of a situation that had happened in the news, but they had scheduled that a week before the event, and now it seems in bad taste. So, that happens. You don't know what's going to happen in the real world. You don't know that your, that your brilliant post here is actually going to rub people the wrong way when some tragedy happens, when something in the news happens. So I'm not saying don't do scheduled posts, but I'm saying think about that, that if you schedule something for a month in advance and something happened in the real world and now your post, oh, I posted something that was making fun of some politician and that politician just got shot. Oops, I got to go back and change that post. So those are the main screens here, page, message, notifications. <coughs> Eventually, as you... Um, as you use this for more time, you will have insights. You don't have insights at the moment, your page is too new. Insights is this page where it's going to give you all of this data about how well you're doing on social media. How many clicks, how many hits, what's, what's, the, the, what's your demographic, what's the most popular time of the day. Um, so that will happen automatically. 
this will happen automatically once you use your page. I think you need that's when it's saying you need 30 likes because it won't be able to give you any data if no one is checking out your site. People then always ask, what's the best time of day to post on Facebook? What's the best week day of the week to use Twitter? People always ask that and you will find plenty of articles that give you that answer. There is no right answer. It's your audience. Your audience will tell you what is the best time. As you use social media, we have analytics, we have insights. These are different terms. Basically stats. Twitter gives you stats. I forgot to look at it, but we'll look at it later. Twitter gives you stats. Google Plus gives you stats. Facebook gives you stats. They all give you stats. For example, for this particular client, I'm seeing the most amount of traffic seems to be on a Tuesday. 325 views on average. 300 and the, the worst, quote unquote, worst day is a Sunday and a Friday, 317. So for this particular client, um, that's what I've got. And then even time of day, the most popular time of day for people to check out this site at 6 p.m. The worst time is 2 a.m. And notice there's a rise throughout the day, there's a peak, and then people quickly die off, die off as they you know, get back to the real world. So what's the best time to post on, on Facebook? I'm not telling you that it's Tuesday at 6 p.m. I'm saying that for this client, it's Tuesday at 6 p.m. You will know this as you try to post something every day for a few weeks, try to post consistently on a certain day, and see what happens. You're not going to see this inside screen until you have traffic and activity, so don't look for it if you don't see it. <coughs> for this particular client, the most popular types of posts are the ones with photos as opposed to links. Yes? Um, when you post something, like, let's say you have a particular time, I mean, do you recommend that you like repost things at another time, you know, if you think that no. No, nope. I don't recommend that you repost the same thing because um, really the thing about social media is about what's new, what's the now. And if those that are following you see the same content over and over, you will appear like a spammer. You're not trying to uh, hit everyone at once. Again, it's about targeting. You're going to let it out on its own tell you what's the best. So you would post something today and maybe make give yourself a challenge for one week straight post something different every day because then that's going to help you on the inside screen it'll tell you the posts with videos did better the posts with links did worse it'll tell you what what you need to do but we need to try it and that works for all the networks twitter also over on twitter make a note of this because we didn't see it together if you go to http analytics.twitter.com just write it down, don't go to it. That's the address for you to check your stats on Twitter. I forgot to mention it, but it's, it's here. Once you set up Twitter and you use it for a bit and you go to analytics.twitter.com and log in, it will give you data just like we're seeing here on, 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 uh, on Facebook. So, sorry, uh, analytics.twitter.com A-N-A-L-Y-T-I-C-S dot twitter.com that will give you these insights, these stats, and it will tell me my tweets at this time on this day work the best. So then it can help me make future decisions. So knowledge is power. All of these networks are collecting a lot of data. What do we do them for? Use them for to help us decide for future posts, future content. Facebook is changing all the time such as myself, I just saw this. I need to educate myself. There's a brand new ad shop section. I don't know what that is, honestly. I just saw it today. I need to log into it, read the documentation, and see what this is about, because I keep telling everyone, you can't sell stuff directly on Facebook. Well, maybe they finally proved me wrong. So I need to look at that at some point. Don't worry about it. I don't have anything to say about it. What I can say is, make, let's make sure we're on the, your main page. 
we have something that says create call to action. A CTA, call to action. That's just a fancy term that means getting someone to do something. A call to action is to get someone to do something. Click on create call to action. Would you want people to contact you, call you, book something, send you a message, play your game, shop now, sign up for something, watch your video, send you a mail, learn more. That's your call to action. When people see, when people see your page here, they will see a button that says book now, buy now, email us, whatever. So you choose what that is. It'll ask you to fill something else in besides that. So let's say if I choose call now, I put in a phone number. That's very useful. Someone is on their mobile device. They see my page, call now, tap it. It calls. It looks like that on iPhone. It looks like that on Android. If you've had a paid Facebook page, uh, this is page for a while, and you don't have a lot of these options, mm -hmm. so there's no way to upgrade and... I am not sure, honestly, but that's where I would go up to the, to the help screen, and I would mm -hmm. search for that, and uh, there, is, there is also one-on-one -on -one communication. You can get a real person from Facebook to contact you via email. It is in here somewhere. And so you would go in there and ask them, I've got an old Facebook page that doesn't have any of the new stuff. Can I upgrade my page? And uh, they hopefully should be able to help you with that. So for us right now, whatever you believe might be helpful, you should choose here. If you don't have an idea, don't worry. You can add it later or not at all. But maybe under Learn More at least, that's a link to go to my other website. Book now, that's going to be a link over to you know, my booking shopping cart. What if I have an app? Maybe I do have some sort of Android app or iPhone app to guide people to. It's pretty advanced, but that's a possibility. Yes? Um, on a screen, a call to action button. Is it possible to have two buttons, one for people who use their desktop and one for people who use their mobile? Because there's going to be different calls to action based on at the moment, no. One. And notice some of them, like contact us, it'll say your button will look like this on iPhone, Android, and desktop website. So some of these will automatically look different for different ways. That's a very good point. Uh, so notice it doesn't even show it as a website, so it may or may not show it as the website. But the thing is that. Yeah. It's either or, unfortunately. We can't have more than one. I'm going to add this at some point. I don't have an idea at the moment, but I would add a CTA when you can. That's found there. And if you, if you add one, you can edit it whenever you want. You can change it to anything else whenever you want. OK, so all that we've talked about so far is sort of like setting up our basics of our site. We want to have uh, something fleshed out before we try to get likes and such. Everything that we talked about on the other networks about posting an interesting photo or a link and such still applies. We'll see how that applies with some nuances in a moment. But what I want to do is what also applies to the other networks as I said about inspiration. Your Twitter account business Twitter account, you still want to follow other accounts on Twitter to see what they are doing to get inspiration to help me decide what I can do, maybe better. Same thing on Google+. I want to follow communities and I want to follow other companies on Google+, to see what they're doing, to get inspiration. Yes, those other companies will see that you have followed them, so if you're trying to fly under the radar and such, and you give a like or a follow, they will see, oh, my competitor just followed me, and then they could block you. So think about what you're doing here about following other, other accounts, but it is valuable for us. So let's say whatever your business is, at the top here, we have search. Mine is a bakery. Search for people, places, things inside of Facebook. I'm going to search for 
cookies. It'll give me a bunch of suggestions such as apps, places, pages, people, and a general search. <clears throat> the point of this is to find people or businesses that care about a topic or are related to a topic. Let's say Sherry Cookies. Click on that. And this is a person that has that name there, but may or may not exactly be the most relevant. The point of this is that I can interact with this person to some degree. I might be able to comment. I might be able to like them. The problem is with real people, regular people, usually Facebook limits us that a page cannot follow a person because of spam. Because of all of the spammers creating Facebook pages and following people, thousands of people, spamming people, people hated that, Facebook made it hard for a page to follow a person. But a page can follow another page. If I search again, cookies, and I see cookies and cups over at Andover, New Jersey, click there, I can like. My page can like another page. That page will get the notification, Victor's Bakery liked your page, Victor's Bakery followed you. The point of me liking and following other pages is to see inspiration and in what the competition is doing. So in this case, I will do that. I'll like. Notice they have a call to action, sign up. That's going to take me over back to their website. I'm seeing, look at this, they use their cover page over here to put on sale April 12th. They created a graphic to catch attention to show that their brand new cookbook, 125 Sweet and Savory Recipes, is on sale April 12th. I can use this however I want. I don't have to literally put a picture of my product or my storefront. I can, if I know any bit of graphic design, I can make a graphic, put some text, put something interesting. This is not an active link though. This uh, will really only show you the picture. It won't actually take you anywhere. That's the next level. Hopefully, maybe Facebook will let us that if someone clicks the graphic, it goes somewhere. Notice what they did, though. They added the graphic, and to the graphic, they attached the photo, and I mean a link, an extra step. It's not as intuitive as it could be. It's not as straightforward. That's why I'm seeing the competition. Oh, look what they're doing. That gives me an idea. I'll do it, too. So I would sort of sort of search around here. As I go to the top here and search, it's giving me suggestions. Victor and Sons Bakery, Victor's Bakery, Victor's Bakery Community, People, Victor's Bakery Ethnic Groceries, Victor S. Bakery. Um, I could go over here, Victor's Bakery, and this is over in San Francisco. It's competition, but it's not direct competition. It might be okay. Go to Victor's Bakery, give them a like see what they're posting about. Currently they they have a location, address, tags, 28 likes, reviews. What about Victor and Sons Bakery? Haven't posted very recently. I should have also said, yeah, you want to follow accounts and such, like accounts, but are they relevant anymore? They haven't posted in almost three years. say uh, I'm simply searching bakery bake sale bakery 85 C bakery VG donut and bakery Hans and Harry's bakery so again I'm gonna do these likes call now just give you the phone number on the desktop but I if I had Skype it it could let me possibly actually call them via Skype. <coughs> Verified page, yes. I um, clicked on one of the pages that came down, and now uh, it, it shows that person's name in the post I think it's their post, right? and then all of my friends on my personal, even though 
how it says, invite friends to like when you try to. It's like <coughs> putting my personal Facebook friends in here. Yes. So we won't be doing that. Just skip it. This is saying, you like Hans and Harry, tell your friends to like Hans uh, and Harry. That's what it's saying. So when your friends like your page, it will then do the same then to spread your page to more people. Uh, We're seeing the opposite side of this. So just ignore that. Okay. But here, that's Facebook trying to make more connections for us. So this is one, one thing to do. Follow or like accounts on Facebook. If this is too limiting right here, you can click find more results at the bottom. Eventually, you know, this is limited. Click find more results and see even more stuff. And there is a value. You know, if you like Nabisco cookies, that could potentially help you reach more people. Yo Donuts, Cookie Cupcakes, and Cardio. So as you like other accounts, part of the purpose of this is for you to have your name spread out a little further and for you also to see content to get inspired by. You will see what they are posting. I'm gonna I'm gonna like Nabisco here. When you go back, when you go to the Facebook logo, here now you will start to see the stuff of those pages that you have liked. They may not all show up right away, but eventually they will show up. So I'm seeing what the competition is posting. I'm seeing inspiration again. Look at these photos. There is, of course, an art and a science to taking good photos, but potentially everyone could take a good photo. You will see what is what a good photo is as you see what people do. This is a good photo. This is three photos, but this is a good photo because it's a close-up. If the, my plate of cupcakes is right here, and I'm standing right here taking a photo, I'm going to see a lot of other junk around the photo. Terrible photo. Best way to make a good photo? Get close. Focus on the photo. Look how enticing that is. I want to buy that right now for the whole class. But it works so well because they're close. The big secret of photography is get close. If I'm going to take a headshot of the boss, and the bo and I'm standing here and the boss is right over there, I'm going to get so much junk from the background, and I'm going to get their gut and everything. I want to get close, get a good headshot. That's a good photo of the boss. Same thing with the products. Close-ups. Yes? On this one, too, it shows up the inside summary. Is that for everybody to see and would I want everybody to see that? Where? 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 The right uh, next to, yeah, there. In, no, no, really, you only see this yourself. This is about your page. I've got one like on my page. Oh, no right. one is talking. Page, yeah, because I'm on. I clicked on this, which takes me to my stuff. No one's talking about my site yet. I haven't reached anyone yet. I've got one like yet. But I'm seeing the content of those that I'm following. And yeah, good photos, but then notice this is also three photos in one. There's various apps that you can download to collage a photo. So I take three photos. I use my collage app. Off the top of my head, I don't have any off to tell you. But I find a collage app, put three photos together, and I share that. And look at this. So it's got these two close-ups. I think these two photos are redundant, not necessary. That one's a good one. I should have, you should have put in another photo here, but inside of it, outside of it. Visual. You want visuals, pictures, or videos. We'll talk about how to share in just a moment. But I'm seeing the competition. That stuff doesn't show up on my main home screen here. Only my stuff that I post here shows up here. If someone visits my page, and you've allowed the ability to comment, they, people will have a button somewhere here that says, I think it says leave a message or write something or whatever. So other people can comment on your page, but remember, we have the option that it will not show up until we approve, and we see that up there on notifications. Someone added a comment, here's where I approve it or not. Now this is optional here, <clears throat> uh, but liking, liking pages, 
is a way also for you to get likes back, to get traffic. At this point, perhaps though, we shouldn't quite go on a follow frenzy yet because we have nothing to show for it. That's the exact same thing I said for Twitter and for Google+. I can start to follow accounts, I will get some follows back, but not without anything to entice. I'm not going to entice people with no logo, no cover page, no content. So before we start a follow frenzy, let's talk then about actually posting relevant stuff. Let's take one more short break, and when we come back, we'll talk about posting relevant stuff, which is going to be very similar to the other networks with some differences. It's 11.46. Let's take one more break, 10 minutes. I won't kick you out this time. We'll be back at 11.56, and we'll talk about actually posting something.